Yeah, I had to ride a, um, a motorcycle on fire, you know, a couple of weeks ago, which I love fire. I'm a weird person. And that, it was the best, you know, I felt great on it. But most people were like, how did you ride the motorcycle on fire? But it, it was easy to me because that's my element of comfortability. Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 40 of the Andrew Deitch podcast. We finally did it. Episode 40. 40 episodes in. It's kind of crazy, right? Feels like it was just yesterday that I was recording episode one, but I've been just taking it one podcast at a time. So here we are, episode 40. Can't can't really believe it. But I'm coming to you today live from rainy Tampa, Florida, where everyone is freaking out about Hurricane Irma. Water is sold out everywhere. Everyone is losing their minds, but I think we'll make it through. And if this is your first time joining me, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us today. This podcast is all about having conversations with the most amazing people I know, and today is no different. My guest today is the amazing actress, stunt woman, and professional wrestler, wrestler I should say, Joandice Candice. And I was put into contact with JC a couple weeks ago, and when I saw her list of credits and her stunt reel, um, I was just blown away. She's worked on countless productions as an actress and stunt double, and I'm sure you're familiar with some of her work. Um, just to name a few, we've, I mean, she's been in Baby Driver, The Avengers, The Hangover, The Hunger Games, Last Holiday, Girls Trip, Stranger Things, Parks and Rec, The Walking Dead, and most recently, she was starring in the Netflix original movie Naked, starring Marlon Wayans. And her list of credits is insane. Her stories are even crazier. And just to name a couple, she uh, was a professional live wrestler. She was Queen Latifah's go-to stunt double to meeting and being Oprah's stunt double. Um, but I am not going to spill any more of the beans. I'm going to let Joan Deese do that herself. Uh, this was a really fun one, and I hope you all enjoy it. So without any further ado, please welcome the amazingly talented Juan Deese Candice. All right, we're recording. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Juan Deese, yes. am I saying it correctly? Oh my gosh, you pronounced that I did. I, I had to do a little bit of research because I was like, <laughs> I'm going to screw it up. But yeah, so I went and like watched some of uh, some other videos and stuff that you'd been in and oh, watched nice. your... I watched your... Um, uh, stunt reel and stuff. Oh, wow. Pretty awesome yeah. stuff. Thank Seriously, you. like, it's really cool. Thank you. Um, but before we get into, like, all that kind of stuff, um, just give people, like, a quick, I guess, synopsis of Juwan Deese. Okay, well, my name is Juwan Deese Candice, and I'm a, uh, I have to do it in this order, wrestler, stunt woman, actor, because that's pretty mm. much where my career started. I moved to L.A. in 2000 to pursue a career as an actor, and so I ended up wrestling and ended up doing stunts and now acting. There we go. So, so you went there journey. originally to pursue acting? Yes, I did. Didn't, have, didn't know anything about stunt work or even wrestling. I actually didn't like wrestling, <laughs> you know, which is oddly, I mean, that to say, because I thought like, oh, it's fake and it's just whatever. And, but then I yeah. started, you know, when, I, when The Rock came on the scene, I was like, oh, and the Dudley Boys, I was like, they're pretty cool. Then an the opportunity came up. I was like, okay. Yeah. Did I That's, realize it is a sport? It's like it's yeah. very intense. Well, it, it's it's weird because, like you said, most people look at it as like that, you know, the fake thing. Exactly. Because they're they're saying that well, like the fighting is kind of staged or whatever. Yeah. But the stunts and the the stunts pain and the athleticism and the, is real. <laughs> like for that sure. that whole part is real. For like, sure. You for have sure. to be in shape to be a wrestler, and it definitely like was the most physical, even more so than stunts and that I've done in my entire life. Yeah, because, like, you're getting hurt I'm on... I'm pounded <laughs> with, with real other stuff. people, yeah, yeah. And it's live show. It's like, you know, no prepping or, you know, let's make a fake chair or nothing. Everything's yeah. real. That's crazy. Yeah. So, before you know, I want to talk about the wrestling stuff because that's actually, like, really fascinating <laughs> to me because I've always been curious about that world because yeah. you do hear so much of the, like, oh, it's just fake, blah, blah, blah yeah, side. Yeah, definitely. But, like, so when you went to L.A., and you wanted to 
And you, you said you moved from Atlanta, right, to L.A.? Yeah, and I didn't realize how expensive it was. I have family there, you know, family that I didn't grow up with who were, were always in California on my mom's side. So going out there, I developed a bond with them. I, they used to come visit for Christmas or we'll go there, but, you know, we weren't close. So, but they didn't tell me. They told me, oh, the weather's great. You don't need this. You don't, da, 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 da. But they didn't tell me, oh, my <laughs> bedrooms are like... Fifteen, two thousand dollars. You know, I'm thinking like, <laughs> what the hell? How am I going to survive out of here? Yeah, no for wonder real. you got ten people to a house. You know, out here, it's very expensive. So I'm busting my butt doing extra work or background work um, to make rent and doing these odd jobs. And then and I got an agent, and it, um, she suggested I go audition for the, Wow Women of Wrestling. And I went, and it was thousands of girls in line. I'm like, okay, everybody's thinking like me because you saw the contract. You know, you're like, oh, I can pay my bills if I, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh. And then I get there and I'm like, mm, mm, I didn't, you know, I'm not standing in this line because I've never been to a cattle call and I'm, I'm an impatient person. So I that's what it's called a cattle call. Yeah, it's called a cattle call. When it's just like tons and tons. When it's just like a of ton of people. It's kind of like, you know, American, American Idol. American Idol. Idol. It's, it's exactly like that. And I sat there and I'm thinking it, it wasn't worth it. You know, I'm thinking to myself, you know, like it's not that serious to me. So I faked like I had to go back to work and I'm like, here, here's my headshot and blah, 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 blah. I wish I could stay, but, you know, mm-hmm. and I gave them pictures of me riding motorcycles, as a, you know, in, in, in high school and this and that, all these sports I played. So I actually got a call two weeks later and they asked me to call. Can you make it to the callback since you couldn't, you have to go to work, you know, Whoa. but you're going to have to actually stay and get in the ring. So I went and they were going in alphabetical order now because maybe it was 300 girls, two or 300. Uh. So my last name starts with C. So I was like, oh, good. Lucked out. You know what I mean? So <laughs> It is unfair to people to have a name, a last name with, at the end I of know, the alphabet. It is unfair. I feel sorry for the people. I was like, up, oh, lucked out. You know? <laughs> so and um, <laughs> so um, in my real last name, I wasn't going, Juwandis Candice is my middle name. Candice is my middle. My last name is Belcher. So either way, I would have. Ah, there I we go. I would have got it. I got in closer because of B. You know, I was yeah. using Belcher. Did you do the middle name, first name because it rhymes yeah, kind of? It, it does rhyme kind of. And I didn't think about it until I actually joined SAG. And they was like, well, what name do you want to have? And I'm like, oh, uh, you know what I mean? It yeah. was like, okay, first and middle name because it just, Joan D's Belcher just doesn't click. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. So, and I didn't want a made up name because it'd be hard to cast checks and I would have to, I'm like, let me just go by my first and middle name. Yeah. So, Fake name always is a little bit weird. Yeah, it's a little weird. There, was, I, I there was like a weird thing I remember, uh, I was watching some award show and they called the people by their real name instead of their stage name. It was exactly. like Common and like someone else and they called them by some other name and it was like. Like LL Cool J, his real name is, uh, what is his real name? Well, Queen Latifah's I, one. And her real name's Dana. You know, so yeah. you're like, oh, okay. You're looking like... It, and it the winner is you. Dana, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, <laughs> who? who the hell? Queen yeah. Latifah's walking up stage. She's, <laughs> she's taking the wrong person's thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, but it's so, true. It is a little bit strange, like how you have that stage name versus real name. Exactly. And 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 actually, when you join SAG, you know, because some people... Because you can't have, like, a, say a name is like Bob Jones. There may already be a Bob Jones. So that person has to change their name so it's not oh. two bob joneses in the in in the in the um in the union you can't have the same name what is it's screen actors guild that's what it stands for right yeah SAG? It's screen actors and guild. so it's like a union of actors kind it's of union of actors and stunt players you know anybody pretty much in entertainment now that we join with aftra which is consists of most of the newscasters and people you know on commentators on tv gotcha so they, we kind of all merged into that makes one sense because i've heard of that before but i didn't really exactly know yeah what it all meant and yeah, stuff definitely. so that's that's cool so you went you decided oh, I to went, go by yeah, that let's give that i went and then um they had us do like a couple of flips and fun things in the ring that i you know because i thought like Oh my gosh, she's bringing back my childhood. This is so much fun because I was raised on my dad's side. My cousins are all boys. So mm-hmm. I was the youngest and I have an older sister, but she's a tomboy too. She had to be, but, but she really didn't hang out with the boys. They were doing the cool stuff like, mm-hmm. you know, ATVs and, you know, playing football and, you know, climbing trees and just, 
that was fun to me as a kid. And dangerous. They, more, dangerous. More dangerous stuff. Yeah. More dangerous stuff. And so, you know, we were jumping in lakes like nothing. I, I, now I'm like, oh, I'm not jumping in lake. I don't know what's in it. Snake, whatever. You know, but back <laughs> as a kid growing up, I didn't care. It was fun. And they were like, hey, you one of the boys when you with us. You know, so I grew up like that. But when I went to college, I wanted to be a girl. So, I'm, uh, uh, you know, I didn't want to do anything that boys do. So I became a pageant winner. I started oh, wow. winning pageants in college to pay college tuition. <laughs> you know, I was Miss Cover Girl and Miss Bayou Classic and all that in my college. So now in L.A., I was like, oh, I'm back being a child again. I didn't think I could do those things again. And it kind of huh. came naturally, you know, because I grew up. It's just I was born that way, I felt like. Yeah. So I automatically in the ring was doing these different stuff and they were looking like she could do it. And I was taking chances of like, oh, let me flip out the front rope, you know, um, the top rope and, you know, just doing all kind of just got in character. So a few days later, they narrowed it down to th about 30 girls to make the wrestling team and I made it. So Was the show was already amazing. on the air or was it a brand new show? It was a brand new show. It was from the owners uh, or the creators of GLOW. Okay. Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling from oh, the 80s. Oh, okay. Wow. So now this was Women of Wrestling that's starting in the 2000s. So they kind of revamped the old show with new characters and everything like that. Nice. So, yeah. That's really cool. So it was it was called Women of Wrestling. It started in what year was 2000, this? 2000. 2000. The year I moved out there. Yeah. Nice. And then yeah. you got the part. And got the part. And uh, they now it's like, what character you want to be? And they wanted me to be a good guy. And I was like... Why would I want to do that? I can't cheat or be bad. Or they was like, well, you look like they was like, let's let's think of they had the kind of character names, and they was like, well, were you in a sorority? Yeah, I was in a sorority. I was a Delta Sigma Theta. Well, we could, you could be um, Delta something sorority. You could be one of the sorority girls. And I'm like, that's not fun. And then I saw KT. I said, what is KT? Oh, those are wrestlers. I mean, those are prisoners, and you know, and it's stereotypical. You know what I mean? Like, and I said. They're bad guys though, right? Yeah. Well, I want to be KC. They're like, what? They're like, you don't even look the part. You don't even look it. So the next day I came, I put cornrows in my hair, saggy pants, you know, wife beater. And uh, I said, I could be dealt a lot of pain. And they're like, <laughs> I said, we could, I could still use my sorority name. I could be dealt a lot of pain though. They're like, oh. We had no idea, you know, and I said, I want to be a bad guy because they, they could <laughs> cheat, they could talk trash, and if I mess up in the ring, it, it'd be just part of my act, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then I, then Loka came. I know I, uh, another girl came, uh, Nicole. She became my tag team partner, but then she broke, she tore her ACL. Then another new girl came who became Loka, you know, nice. and we became KC. And That's we so weren't, awesome. We weren't supposed How to win How did the name Caged Heat come about? Was that like they made that up? They kind of was thinking of, you know, like a bad guy names and they just threw it out there. And so we Caged made Heat up was like these two prisoners these two that prisoners were a wrestling team. That was a wrestling team who kind of gets out on their, you know, their time on good behavior. We get to come wrestle, you uh, know, and stuff like that. They made up the whole storyline. So we clever. became Caged Heat. And we developed our own characters. We, my tag team partner and I share her uh, Ferrara, who's a, a loca. She, we just meshed. We we wrote a rap song, and we wrote it to our video. You know that we came out on the vignette, and and we just created all these moves. We started watching wrestling shows, and we thought of ourselves. We're the we're the female version of the Dudley Boys. You know that's awesome. That's awesome. that's cool that like the producers of the show gave you that much they like gave creative, us creative freedom. Control, yeah. That's really they interesting. That that's where we want to I saw Because I, I actually watched some of the uh, the women of wrestling footage and stuff because I was curious because I'm yeah. like, oh, wow, this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And um, I was curious as to if you guys made that up or if like uh, if it was like they, you know, you had a script and were doing yeah. whatever they said. But that's cool that they. Our, our tag team mostly, I mean, they gave us creative control on that because they had no idea. When we came with something, they were like, oh, that sounds cool. And they, we, it was, and we weren't supposed to win. We were, we knew we were going in. No one was going to like us. We're not going to win. Cause they kind of stage it a little who they think the audience may like. And after the first, we walked out, we got a lot of boos. The minute we walked out, it was boo. And we were like, uh-huh. I just took a poster and ripped it. And everybody yelled. And I said, that's we have to be the baddest, baddest prisoners. You know, that yeah. you're so bad, they got to love us. That's awesome. Yeah. 
So there was like, because it was in front of a live crowd, right? Yeah, yeah. So there was literally people with like a, they were holding up a sign for holding, someone else. Yeah, <laughs> they were holding up a sign. And then I tore one of my own signs. Like somebody <laughs> accidentally, but then they started creating these signs in every show, KC signs. They were like, yeah, tear it up. You know, it became like, we're tearing up even our own signs. So That's funny. Like we don't even want supporters. Yeah. That's funny. So, uh, so like you said, it's kind of like there is kind of decided to be a winner, but yeah. like, but how does that work exactly? Because is it completely scripted as far as like, okay, you're gonna let these people win, or how does it? Well, it's work? not really scripted. It's like you know we rehearse and everything like that, and it's like okay, in this match we're gonna set up for the tag team. Let's this win, this win, and then as time went by, if the audience kind of gravitated towards certain let's start letting this person win but we'll give them a hard time on the way up you know mm. how to get there so i mean it's, i'm sure it's different for different organizations but huh. you kind of give them what the people want you know okay. and you kind of give them what you want to see because if it's a character that's boring they're not going to put him in the ring three times get three times in a night for what mm -hmm. you know what i mean so they kind of give them what the audience wants and huh. that's what creates it yeah that makes hype. a lot of sense yeah that's really cool because, I mean, if you think about it, a lot of times people are just like, well, wrestling's so stupid, like professional wrestling on TV is so exactly. stupid because it's like fake, but it's almost kind of like you're going to, you know, like if you're at like Disney World and you go to one of those like stunt shows or something yeah. where it's yeah. like Sinbad is like doing something. It's kind of like one of those where it's like yeah, exactly. the stunts are real, but like, like obviously. Like it's acting too, yeah. you know, and I felt like I was an actor. Yeah. So I said, I'm going to use my acting chops and hopefully get noticed, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So that I could perhaps be on a show or whatever. Yeah. Anything to get in because you see all these singers get in and rappers and, you know, yeah. athletes, you know, who do acting. And I'm like, OK, I could use this for my way in. Plus, yeah. it was fun and I was making money. So were you ever like scared you were going to get hurt and stuff or were you kind of just like... Um, I think, I mean, I went back to childhood where it, it was, I was fearless. It was like, it was not, I was scared I was going to hurt someone else. Not that <laughs> I was going to get hurt. I was scared because I'm a pretty tough chick. So it's yeah. like, I'm afraid because I used to do a move off the third rope where I flip and pin someone with my legs. And my worst fear was like, what if I kick him in the face, really? Ooh. You know, whatever. And at those times in wrestling, I mean, you're trained to like, you have to keep going. If you get kicked, I've got kicked in the chest by Becky the Farmer's daughter when she nailed, she knocked the air out of me one oh, time. Gosh. And I just pretty much rolled out, caught my breath, stayed in character, rolled back in, and we started the show again. Jeez. It's something that, yeah. You That's just have crazy. To keep yeah, because I mean, like, when you see, like, blood or something on, on the show, it's like, it's real it's blood. It's real. It's yeah. real. Yeah. That's happened. crazy. That yeah. that's really cool. So how long did that did that last? Um, after nine eleven, some investors kind of backed out, and the show got canceled. Was it because of nine eleven, or? I mean, it was just a lot going on with creative differences, like behind the scenes that I still don't know really what happened to this day. Mm. Um, but um, the show got canceled um, after a pay per view, like at the end, toward the mid to end two thousand one. So I just mm. knew, oh my gosh, my, my, you know, just when I thought I was getting the, you know, we were getting the accolades, my tag team and I, cause she's an actor too, that our, our dreams came crashing down. What am, what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it was really yeah. a depressing time. That sucks. Yeah. So then what did you like, so, I mean, so the show gets canceled. The show gets canceled and I basically went into a depression of like, what am I going to do? I just traveled. I went to Amsterdam and I went to Europe and I went to Mexico, the Caribbean. I came back home. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going everywhere. Then all of a sudden I get a call out the blue from one of the wrestlers. Her name is Elle Alexander. She's been a stunt woman for like over 20 years. And uh, she was danger in WOW. She said, hey, uh, the stunt coordinator, there's a stunt coordinator, John Metlin, looking for you to, you know, he wants you to double Queen Latifah for bringing down the house. And I'm like, double her? What is it? You know, I had no clue. Yeah. What do you mean double her? She's a little bit taller than me, just a little bigger than me. How does the house is gonna, what does that mean? We'll do her fight. And I said, she can't fight? Cause I'm thinking, I just saw her on set it off. What do you mean? I had no clue what stunts were. I said, what does that mean stunts? She can't do her own fight? Well, no, you know, I had no clue. So I had to go meet with the coordinator meet with Queen Latifah, who recognized me from doing a music video, because I, I was in no music way. videos for De La Soul. It was the craziest thing. She said, you're the girl in the De La Soul video. I was like, oh my God, how did she 
<laughs> know that. I'm so embarrassed. That's so funny. I was so in funny. their fat, fat video, the P-H-A-T, That's fat, fat funny. video. And I said, how did she recognize me? From? She said, and I watch you from wrestling. You know, Saturday nights. And I was like, she, and she watches me from wrestling? She said, yeah, she's good. And Whoa. so I'm like, what, what does this mean? I still didn't know what it mean. And the coordinator just said, okay, we've seen some footage. I'll call you. You know, if you get a call, we'll start next week. As soon as I got to the parking lot, you got a call, you're hired. I'm like, well, what do I do? Had no idea how much money I was going to be making. Mind you, I joined the union from doing a job, job on the Parkers as an actor, a boxer. So I was like, that's one day. But I had no idea what I was getting into. And it was the most amazing experience. I fell in love with Stutz the first day. That's and because so cool. of Queen Latifah, because she's like the cool, how you see her on TV, that's how she is. She's just downright cool. That, that's crazy that she knew who you were, too. Know, it was the craziest thing. I had to call my friends. Queen Latifah watched me on wrestling. <laughs> and she knew me from the fat, fat video of all videos. Like, she knew that that was me. That's that was so the crazy. craziest thing. That's insane. So, I mean, <laughs> like, crazy. I mean, like you said, you weren't even familiar with what stunts are and what that entails. Oh. A lot of people listening to this probably don't know what that is either. Yeah, like, a, they, a, they know kind of, but... A stunt double is someone who they make you into the image of the actress. So you could do all of their physical things that they can't do, like fighting, motorcycle riding, you know, uh, crashing through things, you know, high jump, sky jump, whatever that mm -hmm. they don't want to do. They hire you to do their hard stuff. So I did the whole entire fight scene and bring down the house that was in the bathroom with Missy Powell and I, and Elle Alexander doubled Missy Powell. So it was like, and she was a wrestler. So the coordinator gave us creative, a little bit control over that. We were both wrestlers. So let's, let's make this, you know, kind of crazy in this bathroom. That's cool. So, so the, the other person you were fighting was a person that was on the show with she you. She was on the show with me too. And nice. the first time we got in there, she was like, okay, let's do some stuff. And I'm like, okay, cool. Damn, I hit her. And she's like, uh, well, you know, you don't really hit the person on film and TV. And I thought like, what? <laughs> like, no way. You know what I mean? <laughs> they say, well, you know, for the film and TV, you kind of just, you know, go past it. I'm like. Because you can do the angles. You can do the angles. And I said, I don't really need to hit you. So fighting for TV and fighting <laughs> in real life are two different things. So I came from a world where we made contact, you know, yeah. we make Then I go to a world where it's all about illusion, mm -hmm. but you still got to have that physicality, but you still got to be a athletic because you are taking hits when you land it on the ground or when you crash it into something. But one on one fights, you know, you really don't need to the necessary extra punches because you got to shoot that same scene 20 times. <laughs> yeah. If I bloody your nose the first time. I can't, you know, I can't get the other side or whatever. So, yeah. you you know, I, it, it's a business. So I had to learn the two different, you know, I had to, I took an actual camera class just so I could learn camera angles so I could be better at my craft as a mm. stunt woman. Yeah, because that's interesting because when you were doing the show live, you had a 360 crowd. Exactly. So if you were faking the punches, like everyone's going to know. Yeah, exactly. That makes but sense. for film, I had to learn how to, okay, what side would I go to if the camera's on the right side behind me? What side mm -hmm. would I hit the person? I had to learn that. Mm -hmm. And so it's technique and it's also skill when it comes to stunts for filming TV. You know, you can't just be a boxer and all of a sudden I want to do stunts. No, mm -hmm. it's a total different yeah. world. Because it's also different because like when you're actually in the scene, you're perceiving it from your point of view, but you have to like be constantly thinking of what the camera's point of view exactly. is. And that's hard for people to do because you always are 24 seven, you're only looking at the world I'm through your own eyes. I'm looking at the world, exactly. And I have to also be conscious as a stunt double that they don't see really my face. So mm. the way I hit, I have to also hold my head a certain way. Uh. So the camera doesn't really pick up my face. It may pick up, you know, a silhouette of it but not actually, you know, head on face. Yeah. So it's like a whole lot going on, you know, to where I'm fighting and I'm constantly kind of keeping Hiding my head face. at a certain, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. I feel like also you'd have to strategically, always, like if you were going to have a scene where there's fighting, probably whoever it was would have their hair down or something so that yeah, it would be it's, more it's, of a... It's strategy. It's all technique strategy and that's when the hair and the makeup team and wardrobe all come into play. Everybody on that set is working for the same cause. Mm -hmm. We're all one team. 
when it comes to making a movie or TV show. Mm -hmm. So I give credit to everybody. That's really cool. Yeah. I talked a little bit about that with um, my friend Graham. He works on the set of The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. So like yes. we talked a lot about like, you know, all the crazy different like pieces of the production crew that you don't even think about, know. you know, like like oh, there's a team that does that. Like what the heck? Yeah. Every crew member on the set, everyone is valuable. Even the background artists, they're valuable. They the, make the movie. If it wasn't for background artists, it yeah. would be no movie, really. It wouldn't be people walking on the streets in the background. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone is needed. Everybody is valuable on the set. So Yeah, that's very true. Because yeah. you've got to create an artificial world. Exactly. I mean, Even craft service is valuable. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. they you, you know, keep everybody in between happy. breaks, it's like, oh my gosh, they got these little sandwiches waiting on us. Or, you know, so everyone is valuable. It takes the whole team to make the movie. Yeah. Yeah. That's one thing I didn't realize yeah. is that craft services had a different job than like the catering people. Like, yeah. like I didn't realize that there was a, a team of people that was just like snacks. And yeah, stuff. just snacks. Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't, I mean, it's like, it's, it's incredible. Like, I used to think, like, dude, is it necessary when I first got in? Then when you look at the whole picture, everyone is necessary. Totally. Everyone. If one person is not working as a team, then the whole team fails. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's why some certain movies are successful. Everybody needs to come together as a team. Yeah. So. And you're spending, like, days and nights with, with these people. people. Yeah, exactly. So you yeah. want to be nice too. Yeah. Like, you know? yeah. It's like a big family you all trying to make nice. one thing. Yeah. That's really cool. So you went from, what was that? What was that movie? It was again? bringing down the house with Steve Martin. Who's hilarious. It was hard to keep a straight face with him. Um, to doing her, my first four stunt jobs were with Queen Latifah. And nice. I really wasn't taking it seriously. Cause, but cause after that movie, she was like, you're so dope. You're going to be my stunt girl. And I was like, okay, what does that mean? You know what I mean? I still was like, Okay, so I went back after bringing down the house to pursue. I worked two weeks on the movie, went back to pursuing acting, was hardly getting auditions, but I was still going to class. And then I got called to go to Vancouver for a scary movie three. Then I got called to do taxi in LA with her. Then I got called the big job I was doing last holiday overseas in Austria. Whoa. And, yeah, and, and, and Prague for, for three months with oh, LL so and awesome. everybody. And it wasn't until I got there that she actually, and she has no idea to this day, if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't have pursued stunts as heavily as I did when I got back. Because she's like, I know you want to be an actor, but you have this craft that's so different. There's not too many black girls do what you do, and you just do it effortlessly. I watch you up there, and I watch you do this, and it just comes so natural to you. You need to go at this full speed, and the acting will come. So when I got back, I started doing training my butt off training for you know cars i went and got my motorcycle license i never had a motorcycle license because i didn't think you had to have a motorcycle license you just thought you could drive yeah, i just hop on the bike and go and i'm like <laughs> i gotta have a motorcycle license i know how to ride so i actually <laughs> went and got my motorcycle license when i got back that's it was funny. the craziest thing so i actually took it seriously if it wasn't for her this is where i am in my career you know that's so Did cool. I start working, yeah. That's really, and like you said, it, you know, there's not very many black girls doing that. No. Why do you think that is? I think, I mean, we don't like to get our hair wet. We don't like to get dirty. Girls in general, you girls know. Girls in general. I mean, just girls in general. I mean, it's not too many white girls, but it's just more white girls than black girls. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But girls in general, we just don't do this stuff. And if we do, they're doing it professionally. Like, you know, professional ice skaters or martial artists or gymnasts, mm. you know, but to do, to, to leave, a, to become a gymnast, to go to stunts, they may not know how to do it too. Mm -hmm. See, that's another thing. Yeah. You know, because we have some gymnasts there who were like, hey, I did, uh, one of my close friends, Natasha Hopkins was a gymnast. And she's like, oh, I could do stunts. She could do flips and fights and then combine with the fights, she become a great martial artist, you know, because they mm -hmm. could hop around and yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, so they could use that skill to flip off stuff, crash. Yeah, but they don't know how. You know, they you know, it's a separate world again. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to be recruited or know someone to be like, oh, you could do that. So that's why. Yeah, it is a really like. I feel like most people, yeah, when they're coming up, like you said, they want to be an actor or something. Yeah, they're not thinking, oh, I want to be a stunt person exactly. from from the beginning. Yeah, because typically not. you get in with like a sport, like oh, I'm a skateboarder. And then you realize like, oh, I'm really good at falling because I've learned to exactly. fall so many times. I know how to bail out when I'm in a sticky situation. Right. And and so then that's how they kind of fall into it. Or, it's not or like race from the car drivers. They ah. don't think like, 
hey, you know, I, I drive a NASCAR and all that. Oh, I could do this on film and TV. Mm. They're not thinking. You're not. You're not in that mode of thought. Yeah, you know, that's very true. Especially when most of the industry at that time was in LA and a little bit in New York, sprinkling in New York. Mm -hmm. They're not thinking like, oh, you mean to tell me I could do this on film? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I could learn how to do this, you know, and, and they're not thinking that, so. That's super cool. Yeah. So you you were like basically Queen Latifah's like official stunt double official for stunt like. Official stunt double, and I, I just did Girls Trip with her, you That's know? That's so, so awesome. I still, like, if she calls, there's only a few actresses, if they call, I will put certain things aside. And nice. my manager and my agent, like, RCM and JVA knows, like, when Viola called me, I love doubling Viola Davis, and when she called to do this movie she had in Chicago a couple of months ago, I told him, I said, she need me a month. I need to take a break on acting. It gives me a break, you know, from acting to go and, and keep my relationship with her and do something that I love. It's mm -hmm. like vacation. And then come back and pursue my acting career. I feel like I need those breaks sometimes. That's really cool. And I need the money, of course. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. That's super cool. So like from uh, from that kind of yeah. place and now you're, you're going back into like acting and stuff? Yeah, I, it wasn't until I moved back here. I got pregnant in 2009 and I had my baby in 2010. And I decided, I was kind of getting over LA. I'm an East Coast girl, I love New mm -hmm. York, and I was thinking about moving to New York, so I said, let me move back home. The, the, the f industry wasn't booming here in 2010. Mm -hmm. So I was still going back to LA a little bit for work, and then I decided to get an agent, Janet Van Dyke, picked me up, and then I noticed because of my training, see, this is what happens, you never know your journey. While I was doing stunts, I had money so I could get training with acting. So I was taking all these classes at Ivana Van Chubbuck's, the Beverly Hills Playhouse, the Groundlands, anywhere I could. Richard Lyons, which is Queen Latifah's acting coach. I even took classes with him. Um, Cy Richardson. I took classes everywhere so I could just hone my training with acting while I was working my day job as a stunt, stunt actress, stunt double, and pursuing my acting career. So when I came here with all of my L.A credits and a couple of credits like CSI and Matt TV as an actor. Nice. Um, I got an agent like that and I was getting auditions. More auditions than I was getting in LA because it's a million people in LA than it's so many people here. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of like the big fish in a small pond here mm -hmm. because I had that training. Plus I had some credits. Yeah. So all of a sudden I started getting aud auditions and I started booking. And I'm like, oh my gosh, why would I go back to LA now? You yeah. know, the interest and now is booming. It's like, of course. why would I go back to LA now still? Yeah. I have more auditions here than I ever had in my whole 10 years in LA. That's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that was another thing that I kind of talked about with my friend who uh, works on The Walking Dead is like how Atlanta has just become this yeah, like crazy it's like the hub. Mecca. Yeah. It it's is like, really, really I insane. I, I think it's insane. Yeah, I think I think it's wonderful at the same time. It's like of course affordable to live. I don't have to deal with LA traffic, you know. So Atlanta traffic is still no joke, but yeah, not, it's no nothing joke. compared but to LA. But nowhere compared to the 405 in yeah. LA. Yeah, oh LA my is like in Atlanta. At least you kind of have a break with traffic. Or if I can, I, the train stations here. If I want to go into downtown, I can mm. take the train and then Uber to where I got to go if I need be. Yeah, you know. I got options. That's very words. true. That's one thing that I appreciate about European cities so much is how good their public transportation yeah, exactly. is. Yeah, exactly. Like it's when like, I come back here, I'm just like, this is a joke. Why? Yeah. And it, especially a city like LA, like why? Why don't they have a mass transportation? Like it's crazy. Well, apparently that's what like Elon Musk is trying to come up with something. They're like, trying to come up with some underground, I heard. Mm -hmm. I heard yeah. he's going to, but then I was afraid of earthquakes because I've experienced those. Oof. Yeah. I was like, whoa. Would I get on one of those? Yeah. I've heard there's <laughs> some... Know. Were you ever in like a really bad earthquake or anything? In... I think it was... Oh, 2001? Well, something. I was... I felt like it was bad. But mm -hmm. everybody else was like, oh, that was just a... Five point... A what? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Like anything over a zero, I'm... Yeah, I'm like... Did you guys... Like everything flying off the shelf and the building is swaying? Oh, that was nothing. They're used to that. The same way, though, we're used to thunderstorms. Mm -hmm. My friend came here from L.A. to work on Captain America with me. California girl all the way. 
we're just on set. All of a sudden, pow, pow, she takes off running under. And I'm like, what are you doing? Did you see the light in the air? You know, so it's the same way. I'm like, oh, I'm used to the thunderstorm. That's very true because <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm super used to like insane thunderstorms. Exactly. And that's one thing you don't think about is like in other places, they don't get crazy thunderstorms. They don't get crazy. In LA, when they say it was pouring down rain and I was like, okay, I'm waiting on the pouring down rain, thunder. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. I'm thinking yeah. like, this is it. Yeah, exactly. You know? So it's the opposite there. So earthquakes, I can't deal. I'm sorry. It's unpredictable. At mm. least I know if it rains, it's a possible thunderstorm coming. That is very true. Yeah, it's no, you could be sunny and nice and at the beach and all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. That's very, second. very true. So. Yeah, I don't know. No I've time. never been in an earthquake, but yeah, I feel like I'd kind of freak out a little bit no too. No prep time for, for earthquakes in LA. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, it is weird that they haven't figured out like a good system of like tracking when that is going to happen. But yeah, makes they can't. sense. Yeah, exactly. But um, I was going to ask you. So when when you started like doing all the stunts and stuff, obviously it's all because the actors don't want to do like super physical yeah. stuff. Yeah. Do you ever Not like? Not just the actors. Producers don't want them to do it either because mm. that's like insurance. Like, why ah. would you want this a lister to be in the fire burn and be ah. set on fire? So it's not just. The, the actors don't want to do it. The producers like, hell no, it's too dangerous for yeah. you know Nicole Kidman. Now, of course, she's not gonna jump off you know yeah. off of your foot building. <laughs> yeah, but like, do you ever do you ever run into actors that are like too proud, like they want to do the stunt, but then there's like someone that they're like, ah, I could do that, I could do that. Well, but- I did run into an actress who you know my first and last time doubling her because she was kind. Of- kind of rude and mean to me, mm-hmm. which I'm not going to name. Um, <laughs> but she wanted to kind of do her stuff. She was like, oh, you don't look like a stunt girl, blah, blah, blah. I do. And the director was like, no, I, you know, it was a fight scene and I need her to take this fall and go through glass. Well, I do the first one, da, da, da. So she did it and bust her ass. And I kind of was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> And she said, and then she came to me and said, okay, well, you know what? You could do it then. You, you think? That's you know, what that's here. what I was hired for. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for telling me to do my job. So, uh, And then you get some who kind of want to do it. Like Viola Davis, I have to say, and Queen Latifah, they kind of like getting in the mix of things, you mm-hmm. know, for, the, for their character, you know, until it gets to the nitty gritty part of the thing. And then I come back and do the hard stuff. Yeah. So they kind of like getting in the, in the mix of things, which I like them doing that. Yeah, you know, because then I think it also kind of makes it easier on the editors because they can take like a little chunk of yeah, what exactly. they did and have a face shot, and then take a little piece of what you did and have it from behind. Yeah, or it whatever. makes it easier for the editor because if they could do like a little bit of it and throw a couple of things, then they could do me in there for the wide shot, and you mm-hmm. don't see as much. Do you ever have to like if if you were like punching somebody and they want the shot of you punching like the actual actress? Do you ever yeah. have to do scenes like that where you're like? I do have to do scenes as a stunt double with the actress, you know, with the actress. And I do get a little close. That's why they hire us, because we will get we'll get the we'll get the shot that they need Mm -hmm. versus an actress with actress will sometimes more than likely hit the actor. (laughs) They'll hit. They'll hit. So, yeah, a lot of times they will if they want their reaction from they will have that a little bit. Yeah, you and know. I bet their reaction's more real, too, because they're yeah, like, Yeah, it Geez. is. It's Liz. I had to do, um, there's a movie coming out about Tanya Hartman. Remember her, the ice skater? How she got into boxing, remember? Wow, and, yeah. Uh, Margot from Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. um, she's playing Tanya. And I had no to do, be one of the boxer actors in there. So it was me and her. They hired me as an actor stunt woman. So, and I was telling her, you can hit me a little bit. You know what I mean? To give me a little something. And she was actually, she was like, oh, this is fun. You know what I mean? So, I feel like she'd be so cool in person. Oh, she was totally cool. I yeah, was telling I her. Yeah, I love Margot Robbie. She seems awesome. Yeah, she's so awesome. I was like, and then she was like, hit me a little. I was like, no, you don't want me <laughs> to hit you. You don't want that. I may tap you a little bit, but you know what I mean? But at least I knew how to control it if it was something. So that should be a movie that's going to be good to watch. That's really cool. Yeah, she was so good and she wanted to do most of her stuff. You know what I mean? So it is pretty cool. Yeah. She was gung ho for that. So you've done work with Margot Robbie, Queen Latifah, who, um, who, like Oprah Winfrey. Wow. I was her stunt double on the last movie, uh, Henrietta Lacks and Selma. Wow. I first met her on Selma. 
And uh, how is I mean, I'm, I'm she's assuming just, she's wonderful in person. Oh, yeah, she's amazing. I mean, I, I was a little bit intimidated when I first met her on Selma and she walked past me and the stunt, one of the stunt guys was there, Todd Warren. And uh, I was like, how am I going to talk to her? Like, this is so weird. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm looking yeah. like her, you know, and so, <laughs> like, you know, because I had the same, the wardrobe. same outfit. I said, it must be weird for them. <laughs> Just think it's kind of weird for them to see someone who looks like you, you know? So I'm like, how am I going to break the ice? And so I, I do a lot of her meditations with Deepak Chopra and all that and, and nice. manifestation. So I just walked over to her. I said, this is the opportunity. She walked past me again. I said, this is the opportunity. She wants me to talk to her because she's walked past here three times. That's what I'm thinking. So I went to her. I said, I just have to tell you, manifestation, your tapes on, on, on I manifested this moment of meeting you one day. You know, I listen to your tapes and I, oh, I meditate so cool. with Deepak every the 21 days. And she just grabbed my hand. She said, meditation's real. And I said, yes. And so that broke the ice. And then I was, and then Todd is like, can I get a picture of you too? You know, for consistency, you know, of, of the wardrobe with stunts. She says, yeah, use my camera, you know? And I'm like, okay. So she used her camera. Then I was like, how am I going to get the pictures from her camera? So then after wrap, she's like, what's your telephone number? I send you, you know, the pictures. And I'm like, I slipped her the number. Thank you. It was nice working for you. Didn't think she was, who's going to, yeah, she's going to text me from her phone. By the time I got to my trailer, thank you, JC. It was great working with you. I have it printed. I promise you it's upstairs on my wow. vision board that she was like, it was great working with you. And I said, I will see you again. Then I saw her again on here. We got relax. That's so cool. So she's, she's amazing. Like there, there are so many people. I really only had one actress who I really, um, you know, had a little hard time with, but for the most part, most of the actresses I've worked with have been so amazing. You know, that's incredible. People I've looked up to have been so amazing. So. Yeah. And that kind of like what you were talking about with like manifestation and stuff. I feel like a lot of people that like can make it to the top. Yeah. Are the type of people that like, you've got to work with other people yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And if you're a jerk, like people, no matter how good of an actor you are, like people no aren't going to want to work with you. with you. Well, it's the same thing with stunts. Like, I mean, you have to have the skill, of course, but who you want to work with? Mm -hmm. You want to work with somebody who got the bad attitude? They would, they would pick a probably average good stunt girl or guy versus someone who's excellent, but he could be an a-hole on the set. Mm -hmm. Totally. If I got to work with someone in two weeks, I work with the person. I know. think that's true just in like in today's life. climate in general. Exactly. Like, like even more than ever, I feel like employers are hiring on like soft skills exactly. of like, if you're, do, do you get along with everybody in the office right. already? Right. Great. Like, we'd love to have you. We can teach you what you don't know. Right. But it's exactly. like, if you're, if you're hostile towards what we've got going on here, no matter how good you are at this job, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It's not worth it. Who wants to work with that? Uh-huh. You know? That's really so, cool. Yeah. When did you start um, doing, like, meditation and all that kind of stuff? You know what? I actually started in college, really, and, and started doing vision boards and stuff like that. I kind of knew, you know, like, if I see it, I, 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 I it, you know, of, 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 I kind of... I don't do it as much as I should, like I used to, and, and I should, but my life has been so crazy busy. But I kind of, I have, I have, you know, you can put an app on your phone mm -hmm. and, and kind of envision. I started in, I started, I've been doing it like 20 years now. Wow. So. How did you like get into it? Like, did somebody tell you like, oh, you should start meditating? Or? Yeah, it was like in college. And, you know, I have a couple of friends now, one who just got her PhD in religious studies. Her name is Andrea. And then my friend. Uh, Marcella Bell. I was in Dallas, actually. I actually have a master's in psychology. So two wow. of my friends were doing it in, while I was getting my master's degree. And they were like, anything's possible. They are so positive to this day. They're my grounded friends, you know, who I run to. So I just started. I've, I've kind of always been a spiritual person, mm -hmm. more so than religious. And um, so I've always believed that what you believe and what you feel you can become. Mm. And that's part of my motto why I kind of never give up because I feel like one day it's going to happen. It may take me 20 years or two years or whatever, but it's going to happen. So that's so cool because yeah. it's it's crazy because like when I first started this podcast, like I didn't really know exactly what the theme would be. But yeah. my main like mission was just to have awesome and interesting conversations with like really fascinating people oh wow you know? how amazing is that and so like i 
I knew that we, you know, like a lot of the people that I initially, I had like a list of like guests that I knew yeah. were my friends that I respected, that I looked up to, all that kind of stuff that, it, that I knew would kind of be on the show. Yeah. And it's crazy because a lot of common themes unexpectedly have been around like meditation oh, and wow. like manifestation yeah. and stuff. Because like a lot of these people that like I really look up to and respect and stuff, a lot of times it's because they like they set their mind it. to they something and envision it. Yeah. Yeah. Most of the time the people I talk to and work with, they have a vision on a clear vision on this is what I wanted to do in life. And it's like everybody who's made it, I feel like they had some type of clear vision. Mm -hmm. You got to have that. Exactly. You know? so. Exactly. And even if it wasn't like, okay, I put a bunch of pictures on a vision board, right. like even just having like that, that really clear mental focus of what exactly, exactly you want yeah. is really super, super important. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that the average person, like that's something that they kind of just don't really think about. They kind of like let, let life happen to them rather than trying to make They kind of go with the flow and, you know, and, and may work for certain people, but it doesn't work for me. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Cause I mean, it's, yeah. Like if, if you just kind of go with the flow and whatever, I'm sure like yeah. good things, bad things, whatever, they all kind of come your way. That's exactly. cool. But you know, if you really, if you, if you set your mind to something, I totally agree with that. You can yeah. totally you could, manifest you, it and make it happen. It. Exactly. That's super cool. Um, so, so now you've like worked with all these crazy people yeah. and you've got a new Netflix movie that's out now, yeah. right? It's called Naked with Marlon Wayans. Nice. I watched the trailer. It actually looks really clever. Yeah, it's funny. I like the concept. It's funny. So it's like really uh, describe it to people. Like what's the well, idea? It's, it's kind of like Groundhog Day, if you've ever seen that, where mm -hmm. Marlon is getting married and he was kind of having second thoughts. So he wakes up naked in an elevator every time and he relives the same scene trying to get to the wedding trying to get to the church so he can marry regina hall's character you know so he so runs every time the he same, screws up every he time wakes he screws up, again. up he wakes up in the elevator and he has a second chance at trying to do it again whether he said something wrong to her dad or you know or something like that or or to certain people that he meet along the way he has a second chance to kind of relive and correct himself before he gets and he runs into the same people he goes the same path every time. And so I'm a part of this biker gang called Sabretooth. So Corey Hardrick and I, his name is Drill on the show, and I play Chandra. Uh, we're a member of this biker gang that he runs into to try to, he needs to get to the church. And so he want to use our bike. So he runs into us all the time. So we're kind of vicious at first. And then every time he comes back, he you knows know, how to deal with he you knows a little how better. to deal with us a little better and then eventually we help escort you know i can't tell the movie but um yeah yeah that's how i got, I got it. you i got you that's awesome and so the movie's out now right the movie's out right it's now on netflix, netflix. It's that's hilarious. cool that's really cool so like I, is working on a netflix movie like any different than working on a regular movie it's no, pretty much they the shoot same it, it's pretty much the same it just comes on netflix you know that's it's so all cool. where it's where it's released so yeah, because like I especially I know for like comedy specials and stuff like a lot yeah. of times uh, for like HBO or whatever they would really go into your set and kind of like ah well can you change this a little bit and like yeah. with Netflix they're kind of just like yeah do, do yeah do Netflix you. it was easy it was fun it was easy it was like working on a regular feature you know so that's awesome yeah, and obviously awesome. Netflix is like the Netflix way of the future. is amazing they have so many great sh original shows I love Netflix I work on a Netflix show tomorrow if they call me you know, that's I, awesome I like netflix yeah yeah and everyone's on it so it's like you know you're gonna get the right distribution it's exactly. not like some wacky website that no one's using yeah exactly yeah what do you like because this is a kind of a controversy right now of like going to the movies versus like a movie going straight to netflix and stuff how do you feel about all that like um, do you you know what now that sag approved the contract and we get residuals for netflix now because at first it was like huh you work on netflix but new media came so fast with like hulu and amazon and all that and it wasn't in any of the contracts so now I feel comfortable that we got a deal it doesn't matter I mean I'm a, I'm a busy mom so sometimes I like stuff that comes on Netflix and Netflix has really great shows but then I love going to the movies and I love taking my son to the movies and we have we go to the movie tavern you know so I love you know having the popcorn and the drinks and the food you know so I like the fact that we could have both that we yeah. have a choice now I like the fact I like that it's a good balance because sometimes you want to stay in and yeah. Netflix and chill, you know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, and sometimes you want to meet with a group and go out like, like I took a group of my friends to go see Girls Trip, you know, and that was a blast. That's you know? fun. So a girls trip to go see Girls Trip. A girls trip to go see Girls Trip. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> no. So that's it cool. Was, is it ever weird like watching a movie that you're in with your friends or whatever? It is because you know my friends 
they see me differently than the characters I play. So they're more, they're more hyped up about it than I am. And I'm more like, I'm trying to hide in the back and hide under a rock, you know, until it's over. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it, it's kind of weird in a way, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. that's me. So they're, they're so excited. And I, you know, I have so much support from my friends. That's super cool. Yeah. Do you ever get to like see the scenes and stuff before it's like released or not really? You know what? Sometimes you do. Like when I was working on Let's Be Cops, um, I don't know if you saw that. With Jake I did Johnson. see that movie. Well, I played the sorority girl where they knocked on the door and they was, you know, the phone and Jaquan Day and Precious, you know. And you the you had like a line in it too, right? Yeah, like I had when a bunch you slammed of lines. on the table you just or something. Slammed them and, and you know that's what you get. You know, I was like, that's <laughs> what you get, shit. So that's when we were awesome. filming it, we got to see some of the things that we liked to like, okay, let's do this. Like this works, you know, especially with comedies, you get to see a lot of stuff because you know, you get so to much try. of it is like ad libs. It's so much is ad libbing and you know, you got to stick to the script, but then you can add your own two cents to it. And yeah. you can tell when you watch comedies, like that wasn't written. That's something they added. You know? Totally. So, yeah. Like I know, for example, uh, Anchorman 2, like, <laughs> yeah. ev there were so many alternate jokes that they made an alternate movie that every oh, wow. single, every it was like in the DVD, every single punchline in the movie yeah. is like an alternate punchline. Oh my gosh. Because they did so many did random. So many. See, that's the thing I like about theater stuff and movie and buying things on DVDs, you do get to see the outtakes. Yeah. So that's one disadvantage with Netflix. I know we had so many outtakes on Naked. So I, hopefully they could come out with something with because the outtakes are so mm. much funnier, you know. Yeah, they should have like bonus features or something. Exactly, in something Netflix. that they could have on Netflix that we could see the outtakes and the bonus because that would be hilarious. Sometimes the outtakes are like the best They're part the for fun me because Marlon was cracking so many jokes that, <laughs> and, and so was Corey that it was hard to stay in character. Like I would like to see some of that stuff. So like when you're on set for that type of movie, like you know. Uh, like, do you have your own trailer? Like, what's like a daily Oh, yeah, thing? you have, everyone has their own trailer. And with this time, you have a schedule on what they're going to shoot that, you know, on a particular day. And, you know, when it's time, you go to the set, you have your own chair and, you know, hair and makeup is there to touch you up. So you're treated like a rock star pretty much, you know? That's cool. <laughs> I like it. Yeah, that's super yeah, fun. So then you just kind of like, well, okay, cool. I know I got to be on set at this time. Yeah, blah, blah, they blah. come get you and walk you to set. And, you know, so it's pretty cool. It's very organized. That's you know? super so, awesome. Yeah. And that's what you're doing full time, right? That's, that's what that's, I'm doing full time between stunts and acting and auditions and being a mom. Those are my jobs. <laughs> that's so cool. How is it? I mean, obviously being a mom and balancing all that is, is challenging. Yeah, it's How, very hard. And I'm a single mom. I have a, a babysitter who, he, you know, he that's so amazing that's been with him since since day one so so he knows her and he's a pretty independent kid himself how old is he now he's seven yeah he and he wants to be everything you name he want to be you know yeah he'll see me on tv and he'll be like okay i want to be an actor but then the next day oh i want to be a writer or you know he's going to do something creative he's a very creative kid yeah that's awesome yeah so like for you know obviously balancing all that is yeah. challenging yeah. and everything do you ever, like, are you ever scared that you're going to get injured and stuff like that? Yeah, you know what? I don't take a job now. I think about my stunt jobs now that I'm like, uh, I'm not doing that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I do think about jobs now. Now that I'm a mom, I do consider jobs. But fortunately, there hasn't been a job that I had to, maybe one job, one a couple of jobs that I had to turn down because I felt like the risk would have been greater than what it was worth, you mm -hmm. know, being a mom. But um, I've been lucky with, you know, getting jobs that are, you know, that's reasonable and kind of easy and more acting jobs, you know, or acting that where I could do stunts, you know, too, that are comparable, you know. That's really cool. So. Yeah, I saw one thing where you got hit by a car. Oh, yeah. I how, did. Oh how is, God. like, how do you even train to get hit by a you car? You don't train to get hit by that. And actually, I did that. That's what made me wake up after doing that job, <laughs> you know, because my son was about, I did that, I think, in 2012, 2013. He was only, like, two or three years old. And after I did Jaja, I was like, what am I thinking? I'm a mom now. What was that for? Um, it was for this TV show called Touch. Okay. Remember when after the spinoff to 24, kind of, mm. Kiefer Sutherland, well, it wasn't a spinoff. It was just a new show called Touch starring Kiefer Sutherland. Okay. So I played this homeless woman he was chasing because he thought I was someone else. And and literally, it's, it's, it's about timing. And I had to know, I had to ask the stunt coordinator, who's the driver? And you say, Harry Kenji Sr., who's one of the best drivers in the industry. So I said, wow. okay, I felt comfortable. He'll, he'll know what he's doing. So we kind of timed it a little and stopped the car to where 
you know, it cardiac is, is something that you want to do maybe one time in your career. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. It's not something that somebody run and say, hey, I want to line up. I want to do a car hit. If anybody, you know, call <laughs> me, you know, nobody raises their hand or volunteers and say, hey, I want to do a car hit. Yeah. But that one particular thing, it was more of you had to be a certain height, like at least five, five, because if not, you know, if you're less than that with the particular size of the car height, potential to go under it, Oof. you know, depending on if it, you get hit wrong. Did you have to kind of jump so, a little bit or like You have to kind of, well, that one I did blind. So it was more timing of kind of like just being on your toes a little bit. So you, so it is, instead of, you can't really stand stable, but it still is, is one that is not just technique. You got to have the balls to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? You can't freak out and the car don't have time to stop. You know what I mean? You're going to get hit by the car no matter what. You're going to get hit by the car no matter what. So either kind of, it's, it's like you have to, you, your mind has to be somewhere else. You know what I mean? And then b b by the time it's over, you're on the ground and you're like, oh, okay, it's over. That was it. Yeah. That was it. You know? That's kind of how all, I mean, you kind of have to view all scary situations like yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, even fire things. I had to ride a, um, a motorcycle on fire, you know, a couple of weeks ago, which... I love fire. I'm a weird person. I'm not a hike girl at all. Like, I don't like jumping off stuff. If I, uh -huh. Especially I don't have a wire. I could be on a ledge or something with the wire, but just that free fall, oh, I'm just gonna, no, I don't do that. But Have um, you ever done skydiving? Yeah, I don't do skydiving. <laughs> no, no, I don't do that. No, not for fun. No, not at all. So, um, but I do like fire. So I had to ride a motorcycle. It was just a little 250 on fire and it was for a comedy. Um, called Tropical Cops is going to come out on Adult Swim, one of those, nice. you know, adult. And that, it was the best, you know, I felt great on it. But most people were like, how did you ride the motorcycle on fire? Like, yeah, most people would be intimidated just to ride a motorcycle. Yeah, just to ride a motorcycle, but you did it. it but it, it was easy to me because that's my element of comfortability. It's just like combining two things you were already comfortable exactly, with. Exactly, that I'm already comfortable with. Now, if they told me to jump off a 100-story building on fire, no, I do the fire, but I'm not jumping off the, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's all your comfortability level of mm -hmm. what you want to do, so. That makes sense. Yeah. What, uh, like, so when they set you on fire, are you wearing like a special thing or like, you what wear, do you do? You know, these fireproof Nomexes, you know, that somewhat in jails, like the firemen wear and everything. So the stock coordinator, Andy Rusk, he was, he's totally safe. You know, most of the people I work with, like, you know, Darren Prescott with fire and everything like that have been totally safe and then it's your responsibility i feel as a stunt person to be like hey i need some on my ears or you know or something like that so too. it's like a gel kind of stuff it's like it's a gel like kind of stuff and then you 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 blot your your um wardrobe with it you soak it in it so mm. you know it 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 stay supposedly not to burn your skin for you know so many seconds or something like that even you know, before they put you out you have know? you ever gotten your hair burned or anything like no because that's also soaked you know, ah. you know, or I wear a wig that's been soaked, <coughs> you know, wrap my hair. And yeah. Wig. Last time I braided my hair down and wore a wig. So it's so it, it doesn't affect my hair at all. Wow. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah like whenever cool. you see like fire stuff, I'm always like, yeah. Uh, did you see the, the Game of Thrones fire stunt they did? No. Two, two episodes. Do you watch that show? I don't actually. Oh, my God. The, the, uh, if I would love to do it. If they had a fire burn on there where they lit about 100 people and, and the ratchet it was the most impressive firework I've ever seen in Jeez. my life on any television film. I bet you have a different perspective of that kind of stuff too. Oh yeah, it, I looked at that and I was like, that's incredible. That needs to get nominated. Somebody needs an award for that. Like that particular episode was like amazing. So there's a hundred people on fire? I, it had to have been like they lit with the dragons, with the fire and just, just, it, Jeez. It was impressive. Maybe I'm the only one, but, no, but they actually had that a video amazing. on Facebook that was going around on how they did it. That's how so impressive it was. So it wasn't just like CGI. It was actually. No, it was actually people getting on fire. Wow. Yeah. yeah that's that's cool. why we thought like, oh my God, how impressive that is. Do, you know? do like a lot of directors, like, I mean, I would assume that to, in today's world, a lot of yeah. times it'd be like, well, we could just use CGI for this stunt or whatever. It depends on the director and it depends on what it is, you know, so, because if it's really risky, I don't mind them using CGI or doing something in a studio that looks like, say it's a water scene and it could be at night and it may be something dangerous to do in the middle of an ocean. I don't mind them doing something in a studio that mimics that that's only eight feet. You know yeah, what I mean? So yeah, yeah. some things are necessary, you know, for for, for CGI. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, 
ocean in the middle of the night just freaks me it out. It just freaks me out. If somebody, I mean, I swim, but am I going to want to do a stun in the middle of the night in a shark and fit? Mm-mm. You're not going to want to go there. Mm-mm. That's crazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, studio, okay, it's yeah. It's so weird how the ocean during the day, like, is fine, and then yeah, at night, it's like, then at night so it's freaky. Like, because I, we watched Jaws too much as a kid. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you. I watched Jaws way too much as a kid. And I remember that lady going out there, remember, in the middle of the night, the mm. first Jaws. Remember, she swam out there and went under and then came up then went under and never was oh never my seen gosh. again yeah no, i can't i, I can't do it much. your mind just it. your mind plays wonder, too many tricks exactly because it's like is it really any different than during the day probably not but <laughs> but but i feel like it's extra mm-hmm. monsters extra or something scary. in there yeah it's extra scary my mind wonder i'm too creative with stuff yeah like the lash nets is out there you know yeah exactly <laughs> so um like for uh People out there that are interested in this kind of thing, like I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to this that have toyed with the idea of like being an being actress stu- or being yeah. an actor or like, Oof. or even being a stunt woman or stunt man. Like yeah. how did, I mean, obviously your journey on that path wasn't very Yeah, it, it was, it was, specific, well but. stunts, yeah, it was, stunts was something I fell into because, because I didn't know, you know, but I also had a stunt background. It's not like they saw me walking and said, hey, we want you to do stunts. With stunts and acting, they're the same type of hustle, but different. Stunts, they like people who have done something, mm-hmm. you know, who are ex race car drivers or ex martial or martial artists or gymnasts or, you know, fighters of some sort, firemen, mm. police officers, you know, not just athletes, but police officers because in Baby Driver, it was a couple of police officers there who are now stuntmen who've been stuck in for a couple of years, but they were ex-police officers. Mm. So they know how to carry a gun and hold it and shoot and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So those those type of careers, having a career that's physical helps, but also having a physical career in athletics helps. Mm. So to, but you would, it's a lot because you have to put your, it's a hustle. You have to put yourself on tape, try to get a reel and shop it and go network and meet coordinators, which are, here in Atlanta everywhere which is you know you have to find out go to the SAG office and see where the productions are being held mail your stuff in it, is SAG yeah. the same for stunt actors as it is for regular actors yes. too uh-huh. so if you want to be a stunt person on a movie you got to be in SAG yeah you got to be in SAG but in Georgia though which is weird because if you're in LA and New York you pretty much you got to be in SAG but in Georgia to do stunts, they really want you in SAG because of the liabilities. Mm-hmm. But to be an actor, because it's a right to birth state, you really don't have to be in the union yet. Huh. You, could, you could get an agent and actually get auditions, the same auditions that I have, you could have. And you, huh. yeah, they may book it. But after you work a couple of jobs, you, you're required to kind of join. Because yeah. by then you're like, okay, now you've worked a couple of union jobs. It's time for you to join. And when you join, it's kind of a good thing anyways, right? It's kind of a good thing. You get the benefits. You get, you get like, I've been vested now like 15 years from doing stunts and acting, you know? So mm-hmm. when I retire, I have a good pension set up pretty much. That's really cool. Yeah. So that it's, makes it's sense. a career. It's a, it's a business too. So, yeah. So I wish more people here in Georgia, I'm, I still meet a lot of people who are non-union. And I get it because work is far in between here. But the benefits of joining to me is worthwhile kind of in the long run. Mm-hmm. To, you know, so by the time you're 55, you could retire in SAG. Yeah. Because like my friend right now, uh, my friend Connor, he does like a lot of like the ninja kind of stuff. Like, yeah. you know, American Ninja Warrior. Have oh, you ever yeah, watched yeah. that show? That's pretty like, cool. He went to like one of the, um, he like sent in his tape and got invited to like be on the show and but whatever. Oh, he wow. actually didn't get aired on the show. But, um. I've been starting to do more of that kind of training and stuff just because it's really fun. Yeah. And we've been going to this place called Ninja Quest where, like, actually a, a bunch of... A lot of stuff people go to yeah. Ninja Quest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. And so my friend Connor's kind of, like, trying to get into that world and stuff. That's and, a good way to start, to get mm-hmm. to know other stunt people. Yeah, so he's, like, trying to put together his reel and all this yeah. kind of stuff. But, yeah, like, n- places like Ninja Quest are, like, super cool. Yeah, yeah. there's other people that actually have cool credentials and stuff and like that. And you never know if they may need somebody like you. Th- they may need a bunch of them. Of course, they'll consider the stunt people first, but they may say, hey, we want to Taft Harley you in. You know, we need a bunch of people mm-hmm. that's like your type. You know what I mean? Exactly. Then that's the way in. So I say train, continue to train with where stunt people are, which is at Ninja Quest mm-hmm. or at Unit um, 2 Fitness in Midtown. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. A lot of stunt people go there for boxing and martial arts 
and stuff like that. So a lot of people go to Smash, which is the Southeast movie and stunt house oh, to do cool. a lot of, you know, work out and stuff like that. And, you know, you get they got the trampoline there, you know, and stuff like that. A lot of people go there and work out, you know, so. That's really cool. Yeah, because I think the biggest thing, obviously, is like meeting other people in that in the industry. Because like, for example, yeah. when you were in the in the wrestling league, the women yeah. of wrestling, and then you got your first movie because another girl that was another on that show. Another girl who was on that show. It, but and it also goes back to um, being nice and being good. Mm-hmm. If I was uh, if I was a bitch to the girl, she would have been like, "Oh no, we don't want her. Let's find someone else." Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you never know who's going to cross your path that's going to help you. Yeah. So I tell everybody, even you may not like somebody's views or somebody's opinions. It's okay to be cordial. It's mm-hmm. okay to disagreeably, to agree to disagree, you know, and not argue with them. But but I say it's three degrees of separation. It's no longer six degrees. That person, you may need to help you further down the line. Yeah. And it always came back to whenever I book something, it's like, oh, wow, the reason I got naked, not only was because I did good in audition and because I was a stunt girl so I could ride the back of a motorcycle, but the producer brother was also the producer of Barbershop that I worked on. Because he go. said that I saw your tape and I knew then. My brother said he worked with you on Barbershop as an actor. So if I would have cut up on Barbershop, you know, and had mm-hmm. an attitude, had been a diva, then he would have been like, oh, my brother said that you was a piece of work. Let's not, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. you was being a diva on bar. I don't want no divas on my set. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you kind of have to. I agree with that a thousand Yeah, percent. you have to. You never know how, you know, a lot of my connections with stunts is because of, of just being a good person and maybe looking out for others and, and stuff like that. Not saying you got to go out your way and look out, but just being nice to people and just, kind of networking and smiling. And, stand, and smiling and just staying positive and giving somebody a lady came to me um um when uh, what was i a couple of weeks ago i was at a workshop or something oh i was at a survivors with morse release party the other night and she said i remember two years ago she uh her name is uh ayana muhammad she has cur- curvy divas motorcycle riding gear now she said, you told me two years ago if I just stay at it and put my faith in it and just go hard. And, and that's what I did. And I was like, I don't even remember that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Is it, was but, she on Shark Tank recently? I think. I don't I know. I think she's, I saw that. She's everywhere now with her jackets. Like, and she said, I think you, I saw told me, Shark Tank. you told me like four years ago, like to never get, you know, like to go for it. And I have to hustle it myself. I can't depend on nobody. I have to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I did. Well, you inspired me because you're doing, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you never know who, who's going, who you're going to sp- inspire or who's going to inspire you, you know? So I say keep inspiring people because to me, that's positive energy. Wow. That's a really cool it's story. It's crazy. Yeah, but, it's crazy. I totally believe in that because like, you know, especially with social media and how we are so connected. Like, I love how you said the three degrees of separation, yeah. no longer six. Yeah. Because that makes so much sense because- It does. We have way more connections now than ever before because exactly. we can keep in touch because and stay in touch. Because of social touch. media, because of computers. Yeah. Before computers, I would say six degrees. But now with social media, no, somebody you know, I guarantee you, I may know their friend. Mm-hmm. You know, not like I know their friend's cousin's daughter's sister. Yeah, you and know? the more, like, the more relevant you are to people. Like, obviously, if you're exactly. getting booked for a whole bunch of stuff, you're meeting more yeah. people than someone that's just kind of sitting on their couch waiting for exactly. someone to call them. And I tell people, you kind of have to do the legwork. Mm -hmm. You have to look out for you. You can't wait on your agent or your manager to get your job. You can't sit there and wait on that. What are you doing for your career today? Mm -hmm. What can you do today to further your career so your manager could be like, oh, yeah, she's going to be on this. And, you know, she's worth working for. What can you do? Are you taking classes? What can you do? Rather than you can't just sit there. You can't just wait on your manager. You have to go do something too. Mm. You know? Yeah, I love that. You have to. That you know, that's one thing that people have been asking me about this podcast too. They're like, "How are you finding all these cool people?" I'm like, <laughs> "I'm like, sometimes it's just attracted to me. Sometimes I've been able to do. I've been like trying to network and like exactly. and try to reach out to people and look that at I you. hear you're, about. You're working your way up. It just 
sooner, sooner or later, you're going to be nationally, internationally known. There we go. There you Hopefully. go. Hopefully. That's the idea. Yeah. For you. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, um, is, if there's, I mean, I know you got the, the guy coming to fix the lamp oh, yeah, in a little bit. Um, I was going to say, is there anything that like, if you, you know, want to give a mission to people or you have like an awesome, just like a final closing, <sighs> oh, obviously it doesn't have to be an amazing speech or anything but like if you just want is there anything would, last things you want to tell to people? people like the journey to get to where you are is going to not be an easy road and you don't want to you want to take the road less traveled because there are lessons to be learned on that journey you know um of course if, if someone could have hooked me up and get jobs that would be great but the things i've learned on my own are endless you know what i mean like the like uh, how can i say this i feel that things that you learn on your own are priceless and you can never sell what you know in the experience and the wisdom that i've gained from doing things on my own has helped along with the people i've met and supported me so i say never give up you have to do your own work and you, your work has to count and you gotta and be nice to people. I mean, that's it, you know, being nice and gracious and supportive, even on their bad days, you have to be nice because you never know what other people are going through. That is very true. You know, so. Especially right now in today's, like, oh yeah, obviously with, the news is promoting so much hate and negativity yeah. and hostility yeah. and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, the only way that we can, I mean, the only way that I can see that we can break this kind of stuff down it's yeah. just being nice to your fellow yeah, person. exactly. I mean, because if you're nice to someone, that, that cuts out a whole lot. Mm-hmm. You know, there are times where I walked in work and somebody's had an attitude, and I knew it wasn't something I did, but you continue to be nice, or here's a cup of coffee, here's some donut, and you never know by the end of the day, they telling you their story. Thank you so much. What happened with that, 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 that? That's happened to me a number of times. And when you brought that donut, that just was, you know? Yeah. It could be as I small as a donut. That. You know, you never know if somebody's hungry and that's what they need. They just needed <laughs> some in their belly. That's why craft service is yeah, so important. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes I'm so irritated that I'm like, oh, I just needed that banana. Like I just needed the water. Like, so you know? true. So I tell people, you know, never give up. Stay true to you. You know, hone your craft, hone your craft, stay on your hustle and just be nice to people and um, hone your craft and just keep at it. I love that. Up. So that's super awesome. Well, if people want to like find you or reach out to you or whatever, where's it like if, or if people want to ask you questions? Oh yeah. Well, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as my name, Jawandees, J-W-A-U-N-D-A-C-E. And if they want to email me is Jawandees at yahoo.com. There so. we go. And you can find all of your movies on... On imdb.com. IMDb, there we go. IMDb.com. You can all look the up anybody. Are there. All the credits are there. That's awesome. Yeah. Do uh, And you said you got some movies that are like coming out soon. Oh, what yeah. movie well, should we be um, on the lookout for? Let's see. On the lookout, I have... Oh, next month as an actor, uh, uh, Nicolas Cage has a movie called Vengeance, a love story. I play a nurse in that. And then um, I, Tanya comes out. I did a small double job in Black Panther and Den of Thieves and Widows. So it's a couple of movies lined wow, up. Wow, that's yeah. super awesome. Yeah. So I have excited. to ask, did you uh, get to like work with Nick Cage? Like, oh, did yeah. you meet him and stuff? I got a picture. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's You'll so see awesome. it. You'll see that's it. That's so yeah. cool. He like, was amazing. He's the nicest he cool? guy. Yeah. Really I feel like quiet. he gets so much hate. I think he's, he's, you know why? He's a nerd, really. At the end of the day, He's really like a little nerd. That's and so funny. And he's so nice. Like the nicest person. I feel like he get a little hate too. He he's yeah, so I don't sweet. know if you know this, but there's this there's this weird like for whatever reason he's almost become like a meme like where yeah. people people will like put his face on stuff for yeah. like no reason yeah and there's this um there's this website called reddit are you familiar with reddit, reddit yes there's yes. a subreddit it's like one of the little groups on there called one true god and it's all about nicholas cage really? for no reason oh no and it's and it's I but like it's, it's it's it's, it's like so funny, funny because they're like pretending that like he's like the most amazing person on earth or whatever <laughs> but and they like photoshop him into all these ridiculous situations oh but it's so gosh, funny that is hilarious i just can't get enough of it it's so ridiculous and it's so weird because like funny. nicholas cage is like why he's like the most innocent is like he's <laughs> never said anything or did anything wrong to anybody he's like, exactly 
He's no, not even you, vocal. I, I, he's I, not I, even on social media. He's not saying nothing. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't deserve this. <laughs> no, but th- that's actually really funny because I was curious about how he is in person. Yeah, he's really he's really sweet, really nice guy. That's you know, cool. like somebody like he, he could live next door to me, and you probably wouldn't even know it. He's yeah. quiet and. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Well, cool. Any 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 other stuff you want to say? No. Just cool. thank you. Thank you, everybody. Of course. Thank you for this opportunity. Thanks for having me on your show. Of course. Well, uh, we'll talk to you soon, everybody. Okay. See Bye. you later. All right. So there you have it, folks. Episode 40 in the books. Like I said, still can't believe it, but we did it. Make sure you keep your eyes peeled for all of JC's upcoming movies And make sure you go check out Naked, starring Marlon Wayans on Netflix right now. I know you got Netflix, and if you don't, you're lying. (laughs) But you sure as hell know someone who does have Netflix, so go check it out. It's a really fun movie and a fun concept. Episode 41 is up next with my friend Sarah Martinez. Sarah is a photographer and a blogger who's really passionate about sustainability and lifestyle blogging, and we got into a whole range of great topics. I had a lot of fun on that one, and our conversation was definitely lit, but chill. And <laughs> that's all I got. Uh, that's that's all I need to say about that. But our episode will be out next week, so stay tuned for that one. If you want to support the podcast, the best way to do that is to share it with a friend. If you like what I'm doing here, if you like this episode, if you're a fan of JC and you think someone else might like to listen to this episode, feel free to share it with them. Obviously, I want to get this content out to more people. Um, and hopefully, if this episode provided you any kind of value, even if it was just entertainment value, uh, I would really, really appreciate you going to the iTunes store or the podcast app if you're on an iPhone and going and rating my podcast five stars and leaving me a little review. Now, that might seem like it is not that meaningful, but there's a lot of listeners out there. I have uh, you know thousands of people listening to this, and there's only about 40 iTunes reviews, which I know there's a lot more of you out there. I can look at the statistics on my computer and see that there's a lot more people listening than 40 of you. So if you're really feeling awesome, please take a couple minutes and go to iTunes and rate it five stars. It really helps me get it out to more people. iTunes just so happens to be the number one place where people discover new podcasts. So if you want this podcast to be discovered, please, please, please go there. Leave me a review and uh, leave me five stars. That would be amazing. But if you want to follow me, again, my name is Andrew Deitch. That is Andrew D-E-I-T-S-C-H. And you can find links to all of my social media handles and accounts on my website, andrewdeitch.com. But that's pretty much it. Thank Thank you guys so much again for listening. I appreciate you all so much. And in the past few days, I've had so many random people just express their love for what I'm doing. And that really, really means a lot to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And I will talk to you guys in the next one.